there. I just want to um, read you uh, part of Isaiah um, 40 and just to tell you a wee bit about it and again from my favourite uh, devotional Bible, um, Jill Briscoe. But I'll read it first. To whom then can we compare God? What image might we find to resemble him? Can he be compared to an idol formed in a mould, overlaid with gold and decorated with silver chains? Or is a poor person's wooden idol better? Can God be compared to an idol that must be placed on a stand so it won't fall down? Have you never heard or understood? Are you deaf to the words of God, the words he gave before the world began? Are you so ignorant? It is God who sits above the circle of the earth. The people below must seem to him like grasshoppers. He is the one who spreads out the heavens like a curtain and makes his tent from them. <clears throat> he judges the great people of the world and brings them all to nothing. They hardly get started, barely taking root, when he blows on them and their work withers. The wind carries them off like straw. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? asks the Holy One. Look up into the heavens who created all the stars. He brings them out one after another, calling each of them by its name. And he counts them to see that none are lost or have strayed away. O Israel, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? How can you say God refuses to hear your cause? Have you never heard or understood? Don't you know that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth? He never grows faint or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to those who are tired and worn out. He offers strength to the weak. Even youths will become exhausted and young men will give up. But those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. They will fly high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Now the devotion is called stress and pressure weary women but you know I'm sure it includes weary men too weary men and women everywhere I see them says Jill I listen to them I look into their tired eyes and I wonder how they became so wearied out in the first place life has surely pounded some of them right into the ground to others Life has apparently been good, but still a weariness invades their personalities. Even people who seem to have it all look weary. It's impossible to just have too much of too much. In the midst of luxury, even laziness becomes wearisome, clouding their waking moments. Their get up and go has surely got up and gone. Their inner lethargy has nothing to do with lack of sleep or increasing age. In the Bible, the unweary God speaks to the point, telling us that even youths will become exhausted. In verse 30, everyone seems to be looking for someone to blame for their lagging spirit. Yet, there's nothing so wearying as a complaining person. The Creator, who is never weary, invites the wearied ones to spend time in his presence, to bathe in the atmosphere of eternal strength, to drink in the air of his power, giving presence to wait long enough to renew their lives. Those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. They will fly high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Verse 31. God will 
mender raw nerve endings with the stitches of his peace. God's promise to those who look to him for such renewal in that they will not be shamed. Are you weary of your weariness? Wouldn't you like to be above it? Have confidence in the Lord who can help you to soar on wings like the eagle. Start waiting on the Lord today. You can wait on the Lord any time, anywhere. You can stop internally even as you're busy externally. You can wait on the Lord in a car, in a supermarket, at the playground or in a meeting. When you feel almost too weary to flap your wings one more time, try waiting and soon you'll be competing with the eagles and soaring high. Now that's what Joe Briscoe says, but you know it's true. We only have ourselves to blame for not waiting. You know, I, I remember being in a queue, and it was a big queue. And this woman behind me, she was moaning and groaning and, you know, do you think we've got all, time, all the time in the world to wait? And, you know, can she no hurry up and all the rest of it? But you know what? I just stood there and I just enjoyed waiting because, you know, our world is so busy. We're so busy trying to do things and get places that standing in a queue is a pleasure for me, to be honest. And also it gives me time to tell people about the Lord. I've got an ulterior motive. But anyway, yeah, we can wait in the Lord anywhere. You know, we, I, I know when when um, when I'm driving to my sister's over in Denny, uh, it, it's a lovely time of me being alone with the Lord. And, and I, I just wait on the Lord. And it's so good. And you know, each one of us can wait on the Lord anywhere, anytime. It doesn't have to be um, a, like a holy meeting or anything. We can just wait on the Lord. And yeah, the next time you're in a queue, you just realise that you've got a wee bit of time to wait on the Lord and just to be still. Yeah, and you've also got an opportunity to speak to people about the Lord. I don't know how you'd open the conversation. It all depends on your situation, but there's always a way. Well, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for your word. And I thank you, Lord, that you encourage us to wait on you. And Lord, to wait on you is just to be still before you, Lord. But we can also wait, wait on you when we're busy, Lord. We can just wait on you and hear your voice, get a chance, Lord, to um, to speak to people. And Lord, I know when we open our mouth to speak about you, you give us the words to say. And that's because we're waiting on you, Lord. So whether we're busy or whether we're calm and still before you, Lord, help us to wait on you and to spend that time, just a few minutes with you, Lord. And Father, that we would nourish on your word. Father God, I thank you that you have given us your word for all occasions, Lord, no matter where we are or what we're doing, where we're going, Lord. You have a word for every situation and I thank you for that. So thank you once again for your word.